the little child says here is pleasure the ice cream cone and it's going to melt fast so extract as much pleasure as you can out of it eat it enjoy it relish it because it will get over for some people life is all about pleasure what to do next where to get the next hit how to enjoy and titillate the senses to the maximum but then for some people life is like the candle the candle says i will give out as much light as i can until i melt so they have adopted seva service i will serve and do as much good as i can before life gets over that is the way life is meant to be because as a little part of god you are meant to serve him in your own way with your own talents bhagavad gita chapter 4 verse chanting is followed by translation and commentary by swami mukundananda पाने चुक्वते प्राणम प्राणे पानम तथा परे प्राणा पान गति रुद्वा प्राणायाम परायणा अपरे नियता हारा प्राणान प्राणे शुचुक्वते ृतभुज याम सनातन नोकोस्तम still others offer as sacrifice the outgoing breath in the incoming breath while some offer the incoming breath into the outgoing breath some arduously practice pranayam and restrain the incoming and outgoing breaths purely absorbed in the regulation of the life energy yet others curtail their food intake and offer the breath into the life energy as sacrifice all these knowers of sacrifice are cleansed of their impurities as a result of such performances those who know the secret of sacrifice and engaging in it partake of its remnants that are like nectar advance towards the absolute truth o best of the kurus those who perform no sacrifice find no happiness either in this world or the next some people are inspired to work on their breath breath is called prana pran also refers to the subtle energy in the atmosphere that causes movement in all things when we breathe in we assimilate the pran from the atmosphere within ourselves and it doesn't refer just to the oxygen it's a subtle energy the chinese call it chi so this process of pranayam involves breathing in which is purak breathing out which is rechak and holding the breath which is kumbhak 
So you can breathe out and then hold the breath, which is Bahya Kumbha. Or breathe in and then hold the breath, which is Antar Kumbhak. So Lord Krishna is saying, he is referring to both of these. In the process of Ashtang Yoga, the Bahya Kumbhak is considered very precious. When they breathe out and then they hold the, their breath, the mind kind of blanks out. And they love that mindless sensation that it brings. So, some people love to offer this kind of austerity as a process for subjugating this unruly mind and senses. Now, give them an inch and they will want a yard. That is the nature of the senses and the mind. They want to be indulged, they want to be stimulated, they want to be gratified. And if you fall for them, then they'll take you on a ride. So like a little child needs to be disciplined along with love, so do the mind and the senses. We must not listen to the mind, we should make the mind listen to us. So these austerities are being performed by people for inner purification. Various kinds, some are doing the pranayam. And then in the next verse he says, some people, they practice fasts. So the pran in the body, it is of five kinds. Pran, apan, vyan, saman and udan. Such a deep analysis our Vedas have. The pran is the life air, the energy that is causing, that is energizing the organs. Apan is responsible for the excretionary function. And vyan is responsible for the circulatory function of the body. Saman is responsible for the digestive function. And Udan is what energizes the metabolism in all the cells. So this Saman is responsible for digesting your food. And when you stop eating, then the Saman neutralizes itself. Now that is the kind of sacrifice that some people are offering. All of these must be done in a spirit of devotion to God. Hence, the Kriya Yogis, etc., they all realize that the end of this whole process is Bhakti. If you leave Bhakti out, then Yoga Kuyog and Jnana Agyanu, Jahanahi Ram Prem Paradhan. So having described so many different kinds of austerities, now he is concluding that based on everybody's different sanskars and propensities and proclivities, they purify themselves, they worship the Lord in a variety of ways. And by engaging in sacrifice, they start purifying themselves. So what is the secret of sacrifice that he is saying? The secret is, it is meant for the pleasure of the Lord. Just like the hand is a part of your body. And its constitutional function is to serve the body. And then the hand automatically gets taken care of. So this is the sacrifice of the hand, not to take care of itself, but to take care of the body. Likewise, we are little parts of God and the sacrifice that we are called to make is to please God. In that we will automatically find our self-interest fulfilled. Those who understand this, they look on life like a candle. 
those who don't understand it look on life like an ice cream cone what is the difference see somebody the little child says here is pleasure the ice cream cone and it's going to melt fast so extract as much pleasure as you can out of it eat it enjoy it relish it because it'll get over for some people life is all about pleasure what to do next where to get the next hit how to enjoy and titillate the senses to the maximum but then for some people life is like the candle the candle says i will give out as much light as i can until i melt so they have adopted seva service i will serve and do as much good as i can before life gets over that is the way life is meant to be because as a little part of god you are meant to serve him in your own way with your own talents so this is the secret of sacrifice and then there are those the ice cream cone walas who don't understand the secret of sacrifice or who don't adopt sacrifice so shri krishna says such people they are running for pleasure but do you think they are getting pleasure he says they don't find happiness in this world or in the next ab main nacho bahut gopal kaam krodh ko pahri cholna kanth vishay ki mal ab main nacho bahut gopal their senses their mind keep on making them dance there were two classmates ramesh and dinesh they were residing in iit delhi hostel nilgiri hostel now at night 11 o'clock ramesh got the desire i want cigarettes he said are bhai dinesh let's go and have a cigarette dinesh said it's 11 pm just go to sleep no 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 i need a cigarette dinesh went off to sleep ramesh went he checked out now naturally all the shops within the campus were closed so he went outside there used to be shops outside the campus they were also closed so he took his vehicle and he went on a ride covering the nearby colonies finally he got a cigarette he brought it back he smoked and he went off to sleep at 1 am in the morning next morning when they both woke up dinesh asked ramesh are bhai what time did you sleep last night ramesh said 1 am 1 am so you were awake from 11 pm to 1 am for your cigarette yeah and where did you reach at 1 am where you were at 11 pm what do you mean look at 11 pm you had no desire for cigarettes you were calm and peaceful now you created the desire i need a cigarette so you went chasing for it you were agitated by the desire for 2 hours and finally when you got the cherished object you extinguished the disease that you yourself had created now nah, i have got my cigarette now nah, i'll go to sleep i did not create any desires for cigarettes i went off to sleep at 11 pm so we create these desires get disturbed and agitated and then we extinguish the problem that was our own self made one it is like somebody puts his 
feet in the mud and says, my feet have got dirty. Please bring water. Please bring soap. Please bring a towel. So his friends come and they clean up. So why did you put your feet in the mud in the first place? So that is the life of Vikarma. The life devoid of sacrifice. Creating problems, solving them, creating problems, solving them. And that is in this life. So, in one life or the other, somebody has to come to the conclusion, this is not the way to happiness. Now, you can keep on chasing it for another 1000 lives. Or you understand from Lord Krishna, from the Ramayana, there is no happiness like this. Himate anala prakata baruhoi vimukha ram sukha pavan koi Tulsi Das Ji Maharaj writes in the Ramayana Impossible that somebody can find happiness in this manner. So in this life they are unhappy and in the next life they get the consequences of their karmas. Now, you know, when people do ghotala in their tax returns and the IRS official calls them, then how scared they become. And after death, when Yamaraj will say, give me an account of your karmas, then how scared we will become at that time. So, the Result of such vikarma is you continue your journey in the jail house. There are three kinds of jail out here. A class jail, B class jail, C class jail. Like in the world, there is a VIP jail. When some political big wig, he is put into jail, they, they go into the VIP jail where they sit on a sofa and they get their drinks and they can see the news, the TV. But jail is a jail. So the goal has to be to get out of the jail house. Now as long as you are in this jail house, it is, you know, one pandemic comes and the next pandemic comes, then Hazik Hurricane Ida comes, then the next. So God keeps on arranging for all the miseries. We have to decide that, look, this is a jail house. One prisoner you know, and all the prisoners, when they used were in the jail, they used to be given this mattress and little special belongings, etc. And when they would be released from the jail, it would be given with them as a gift. You can take this along with you. So one prisoner was released after completing his term of five years. And the warden said, all right, take this, your possessions. He said, no, 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 keep them. Why? I'm going to come back very soon. I've made all the plans. So we will also keep rotating in this cycle of life and death. The Sri Krishna says, they will find no happiness in this life or in the next life. It's better than that is to see through this puzzle which the material energy has created. To dismantle it. So what is the puzzle? The puzzle is like what a Russian scientist created for a mouse. He put the mouse in the mouse trap and he left two terminals there. If the mouse touched this terminal, it would receive an electric shock. If it touched the other terminal, it would receive a piece of bread. So by chance it touched here, then it touched there, then it touched there, then it touched there. And slowly the learning happened even in the mouse's little brain. Don't touch this. Touching this is very advantageous. You get this yummy, yummy bread. So now the mouse would touch it and eat to its fill. When the scientist saw that my mouse has got educated, he reversed the terminals. So now when the mouse would touch here, it would get an electric shock. And if it would touch here, it would get the piece of bread. 
So it kept on making the mistake until it slowly relearned and unlearned. Hey, you need to touch here. So Mickey Mouse now started touching out here and getting the bread. The scientist saw that he has learned again. He again reversed the terminals and then again and then again until the mouse became thoroughly confused. Just now I was getting bread, now I'm getting a shock, now I was getting bread, now I'm getting a shock. And the scientist opened the mouth of the cage. You are free, if you like, you can run. But the mouse was so allured by this puzzle, it did not want its freedom. I don't want to run. I just want to find out how will I get this bread. But I got a shock. Never mind. Next time I'll get bread. But again I got a shock. So in the same way, we also get so enchanted by all the jhapars that Maya Devi keeps giving us. We hope maybe next time I'll not get a jhapar. See, from a higher position, the saints say, what kind of life do they have? But to us, it seems so enchanting. Now you will say, what life does a pig have? It goes around eating stool. You know, in India, the pigs are wild, running wild. So they are eating stool in the drains. What kind of life is this? But if you ask the pig, he says, you know, today I got wet stool. <laughs> Once Indra... Devraj, the king of the celestial abodes, he was cursed and he became a pig. So it was a time-bound curse. For this much time, you will become a pig. So he became a pig. Now, of course, he had his wife, the she-pig, and the little pigs, piglets also. So... Just like us humans, Indra also got attached to the whole family of piglets. His time got over. And the Devi Devta said, Maharaj, come on now, your time is up. You come out of it. Indra said, I don't want to come out of it. I am expecting very tasteful excreta in the evening. The Devi Devta said, what kind of life is he leading? How to get him to see the reality of it? They cut the pig's body and pulled out his soul. And then he said, oh my God, what a life I had. So likewise, we, if we can just distance ourselves, we say, what is this? Kripaluji Maharaj says, Taji de indrina vishaya vasana प्रेम सरस रस पागरे उठ जागरे He says, give up these enjoyments of the senses and relish the real pleasure of divine love which will satiate you, which will purify you, which will uplift you.